you know, my children's father, and who I worked with for many years, is Sugar Minot. Um, my uncle is Clement Dodd. You know, I promoted the best. Um, for real? You know, the music. <laughs> and um, at the time that the DJs or the DJ um, music became successful, it was a marketplace here in America where the young Jamaicans mixing with the young Americans created this whole wave of interest in dancehall music. And the DJs, you know, a record company is a system that looks at, it doesn't, it doesn't screen lyrics or anything, it looks at what does the consumer want. As we speak oh, here, it, no, no, hold on. It sell it? That's no, hold, on. It sell hold on a minute, I'm just talking about when you speak about when the artist performs, why does he do it? He does it because of the crowd, right? He may not even want to feel up this way about it or whatever, but he wants to please a crowd. The record company wants to please that same crowd. So they're a sellout? Whatever you want to call it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just telling you, you can't jump You're selling in. selling No, no, you can't jump into a food chain. You have a food chain. You can't just jump in here and then you figure out everything else. You have to look at the whole complex thing to understand whatever. The artist wasn't, I can tell you that I signed Jimmy Cliff. I signed Diana King. I signed World of Girl. I signed Diana Kamosi. You understand what I'm saying? When Buju Banton was signed, he, he wasn't signed because I can tell you the, the history of Boom Bye Bye because Boom Bye Bye was a version of a song that I released called Flex, That's right, true. by Cobra, yep. right? And that was a huge hit. Yep. A crossover and, hit. A crossover hit. <laughs> and when Shabba Ranks was moving through the system and up there, somebody took one of his old Just Reality albums and picked out a song called Mama Man, right? It wasn't anything that Shabba was producing Don't or singing for the major Mama Mama. record companies. Because they did up their standard when they, you know, because they're now trying to go to a larger audience. And when they went after him for Mama Man, right? This thing came out and specialists knew because if anybody I blame and I tell him to his face, I blame specialists. Make a note right? of that name. Because we're gonna come back. <laughs> he knew what was happening with Shabaran. His artist was Cobra with Flex. When I heard the tune, Boom Bye Bye, I said, no, that should not be released because Buja Banton was just signed, oh, that's right. right? And you know what is happening with Shabarax. Right. And it's a conspiracy. Remember, you know, I'm in the record company. We are a Jamaican music making inroads in an American system. There are a lot of people who don't want us in there. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Still don't want so, and still don't want us in there. So he releases now Boom Bye Bye to clip Buja Bantan because Buja Bantan was coming hot yes. on Shabaran Street. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? You heard it right so, here. Yes. When yeah. that happened, Shabaran was on a tour with Bobby Brown. Yes. Happened yep. to go to England. Yes and was caught in an interview saying something defending Mama Man or something, right? When all of them were being schooled, public relation wise, stay away from the issue. Stay away from the issue. Say nothing, you claim the Fifth Amendment, etc. Because it's a public relations issue. You understand what I'm saying? And he went in there and he dropped into the hole that was dug for Bujabanta. I, this is why I defend Bujabanta, because I know that this guy did not purposely promote, or this was almost done as a dub play type thing for some underground situation. You understand what I'm saying? Flex was the song that was a major hit and go record, we, we, right? So the responsibility to have this record haunting this guy, you understand what I'm saying? For so many years when I know he didn't, for, for specialists to produce the record, knowing what he knew, 
And at the end of the day, Buja Banchan was, not Buja Banchan, Shabba was thrown out the Bobby Brown tour because the sponsor said, yanked him because of all of that. But until this day, Buju Bantel, I, I understand what you're saying and I understand, but Buju yes. still haven't come out no, and defend anything. Buju doesn't even know to the extent. I'm telling you because I'm telling you because this is my experience and I know who the responsibility is with and where a lot of these things that the artists are doing. I'm in a position. A lot of people in the industry are in a position because this is what record companies, when I go and work with Sony and Columbia, they have public relations departments, they have lawyers, they have all of these things that when the artist comes up and it's starting to affect the marketplace too much one way or the other. They, put the, they don't put the artist out there. They put their public relations specialists and lawyers and say, break it down, take it out, put the artist with some philanthropic thing, break that down. You understand what I'm saying? Squash it. Because they understand that popular culture is going to take up the negatives. You understand what I'm saying? So they put things in place to manage the thing. You don't just leave it on it. When this gay lobby thing came up with the dossier, I was on the front line negotiating with the gay lobby what and what to do. I recognized the whole thing was a PR campaign that could only be fought by your own PR campaign. The last person that you wanted out there was the artist. You understand what I'm saying? The last person. So, Maxine, let me ask you, I don't mean to interrupt, but just in the, in the, I mean, this is great, right? You're hearing it here. But in the interest, you said that Bojo, and I hate to keep coming back to Bojo, but since we're there, Bojo wasn't even aware of the background to this, the backstory to this. But I think what I hear from a lot of people, when I, I talk to people a lot, they're saying that perhaps if when this thing happened in the early 90s, when Buju was first accosted about this, perhaps if at the time he had eaten humble pie, I'm just telling you what I've heard. He ate humble, humble pie, pie and because told he people, did. till Shiloh, he did. Okay. till Shiloh, Buju put on locks. Yes, when come. Buju faced the, 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 the gay thing, mm -hmm. right? And saw the pressure right. that came on him. He went inside himself. And that's what got, got and that till what Shiloh. brought out till Shiloh and his whole Everything changed. Everything changed. What Sorry. happened after that though? He, 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 people said that he went back to the dance hall. Love Sponge and I can't name all the songs because I don't know. He did because, because, what, because what? when he lost, when he lost ground, because this is what happened. That crowd in Jamaica. Take notes. You understand what I'm saying? When you're talking about the crowd in Jamaica, mm -hmm. you need to figure out who this crowd is. Okay. This crowd is the Don in your area. All of his soldier them. All of, you understand what I'm saying? All of this. And when you leave out and sign with the record company internationally, and you want to go home and stay relevant right. to your crowd, true. you have to go and oh, talk. It's true. It's true. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, but then, but then what you said, listen, listen, we're here, we're learning how to engage. All right? Mystic Boy said, and I know you heard, Mystic Boy said earlier, that he would rather not go that route if I that got, is the choice that he has to make. I got offered the record deals if I wanted them, but I refused to sell my soul. And you said it's to me on the occasion that you have been there yourself. Look, look, hold on. Let me tell you something. I want you to see foolishness though. I was there the night when it happened. I was in the, the, the house. You know the deal. You know you know what I'm about. Yeah. So you're not care to run the business publicly, but yeah, we're on your stream, don't you? Do <laughs> I was in the house when the foolishness came down on, on Bojo head because Bojo, the lawyer, Bojo lawyer was, you know the deal. But put it this way, ma. <laughs> oh, you know my business, oh, you're talking about your skin. We're on your stream, we don't want to go there. It's okay. Your thing, ma. But what, watch your thing now. I was signed to a record company too, MCA Records, right? They sent for me right after the Sun Splash thing. Me, Barrington Levy, Morgan's Heritage, and Steel Pulse got signed the same night, or got offered the same night. I went to Los Angeles, and when I saw what they had laid out for me, and the band, they brought in Rick James' old band to back me. And the first video was supposed to be knocking on even though I was supposed to be a barefoot boy with jeans and pretty shirt on on the beach like a tourist bum. You know that style where you enter to a tourist? That was my first video. I refused to do it, right? The song that they offered, the first single that I was supposed to be offered, that I was offered, 
to sing was a song called Vice Versa Love. That when the half of me and I refused to do that because that, that's an acoustic thing with piano and blah 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 and it's a, like an R&B thing. Because I'm try, that was the time when I'm try to switch up reggae into what, what Diana King jump on and start do, right? When the half of me that I said, no nah, King, me I, do, me, I, me I deal with the reggae thing, that's what I used to, I used to the Jacob Miller and thing there. They push my, you know, aside and bring in Bant and Lee become sing the same record. And the man take up the song and sing the song. And I say, King, they offer me a guy to be my manager when I had a manager at the time, be it about how dumb she was, you know what I'm saying? But I had a manager at the time, and them offer me another dude who for manage me, an American dude. And I was like, nah, man, this little beef here come from way back then, so we're not gonna do it. So you know what I got? I got stuck in a, car, in a, in a contract for three years and nobody look at me. But, so, Ed, but, but still, you made a decision. You made a decision. But I did it because exactly. we never desperate. Well, and so what Maxine is saying that there's a desperation that you no, let me tell you, 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 you mean you mean all the time. Peer no, 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 Jamaica, it's not peer pressure. pressure. It's not peer pressure. It's not peer hold pressure. On, hold on, hold on. What Jamaica, as a marketplace, cannot support its music. Right. Jamaica. So why do they depends. need it? Hold on a minute. Why do they need it? No, Jamaica depends. Because remember, you know, the foreign companies don't come to Jamaica to find the artists. They used to. The foreign companies, the, the music already left Jamaica, going through the Jamaican companies in foreign. Jamaican companies in foreign was Island Records. Jamaican company in foreign was Trojan, Mr. Palmer, Greensleeves, right? Jamaica companies in New York, VP, Channel One, Studio One, etc. They don't come to Jamaica, they, they rarely have to because the music comes with us. We are the ones who put it in our grip. When right. they say they lose the, the grip, true, true, uh -huh. we, look, we carry the music in our grip. We trade it amongst ourselves, St. John's Road, Schenectady. it. We, we are, you know, amusing ourselves. And our amusement of ourselves interests the people that we come to live with.